In this video, we're going to cash a check for a new customer and an existing maker. We've already selected a customer and we're now ready to cash a check. You'll notice that the check cashing screen is divided into four main sections. The checklist, which walks you through the stages of cashing a check. The issues box, which displays any problems or warnings with the check the stage section, which displays the current stage you're currently working on, and the footer, which allows you to move on to the next step or cancel working on this check at all. In the customer validation stage, use the customer photo and the IDs on file to confirm the identity of this customer. As with other picture boxes, you can double click on these IDs or the headshot in order to see a larger view. If any of these IDs were out of date, the warning would be presented in the issues box. From this stage, you can also check the customer's basic information and their step. Also during this step, the system automatically checks the customer's first and last name against the Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Asset Controls list of specially designated nationals. In this case, the customer did not show up on the list. There was no hits. We recommend visiting the OFAC website to review your options when dealing with customers that hit on the OFAC list. You're now ready to move on to the next step in your checklist, and you can do this one of three ways. You can click the Scan Check item in the checklist, or you can click the Next Step button in the bottom right-hand corner of the dialog box. Like all dialog boxes in our system, with footers like this, you can also push the F12 button. In this step, we'll be scanning the front and back of the check. The controls to do this are just like the controls we use to add a customer. So go ahead and click the scanner button. You'll now see the same scanner dialog that we used when we added an ID under add a customer. Just like add a customer, our scanner has already been selected, but can be changed using the settings toolbar. In add a customer, the identification was automatically selected. Here, check has been automatically selected, but in this case, we're actually going to use a personal check. So go ahead and select that. You're now ready to scan your check. Click the scan button in the toolbar. And with your scan complete, click finish or push F12. On the main check caching screen, you'll see that our check is in, but we also have an issue. The system is warning us that we haven't scanned the back image of the check yet. And you'll notice that this issue is a yellow issue. That's because scanning the back of the check is not actually required to finish the process, but it's suggested that you do. To do that, go ahead and click the scan button on the check back and follow the same steps we use to scan the check front. The check scanned and our issues list clear, we're now ready to move on. Just like before, click the next item on the checklist or the next step button. Under the check type step, we have three primary boxes. The first shows the scan you made of the check you're currently caching. The second is to select the check type you're currently processing. And the last shows you an example check of the type you currently have selected. In this example, we're caching a personal check. So go ahead and select that and note how the pictures change in the example check type box. That step's now done, so go ahead and move on to the next one. The select account editing area is divided into four sections. The first section shows the check you're currently working on. The second is a list of all the accounts this customer has cashed checks on before. As this is a new customer, the list is empty. If we did have an account selected, the last check cashed on that account would show up in the account check box. This can be used to compare the current check against the last check cached to see if they're similar and help guard you against check fraud. The last section allows you to enter the routing number and account number for this check. It's not always easy to know where these two numbers are on a given check. It can change depending on the type of check. So we've provided a box that has replaced the account checkbox that helps you locate them on the type of check you're currently caching. Enter the routing number and account number for your check 
and note how the selections change in the field location helper box. Though this is a new customer and didn't have any accounts he had cashed checks against on his own, the maker had checks that were cashed here previously. The system automatically selected that account and maker when we entered in the last account number. This step is done, so go ahead and click the next step button or push F12. And notice how the system skipped over the maker selector step. This is because the maker was already discovered in the last step. Here on the check info step, you'll note that we have our field location helper box back and also a larger version of the check currently being cached, which will help us enter in the details. Go ahead and enter in the rest of the check information using the field location helper as your guide. Notice how some of the information has been entered in by your previous selections. The system tries to do this whenever it can. And you're now ready to move on to the next step. The fee step is divided into two sections. The section that allows you to select the type of fee you want to apply to this transaction and the total section which shows you the check amount, how much you should hand back based on the fee selected, and you can decide whether or not you want to print a receipt. Since Mr. Roosevelt is a new customer, go ahead and select that fee type. And if you have a printer hooked up, go ahead and click the print receipt. We're almost finished. Your choices here are to go back through some of the previous steps, click add another to add a second check for this particular customer, or to click finish or F12. Because we haven't printed using this database before, the print preview dialog has appeared. As with other parts of hardware in this system, the system itself tried to auto-configure and select the printer it thought you were going to use. Naturally, you can reconfigure this any way you like, and in this case we have a dedicated receipt printer, but we could select a different printer by clicking on that button. Most receipt printers are around 40 characters in width. If yours is different, you can adjust that. The first time you print with your printer, you're going to want to set your header and footer section to define something that you would like for your store. And lastly, if you print a receipt at all, you may find that you want to print two copies or more. You can change that very quickly here. The changes you make in all these properties will be recorded and remembered by the system, so you won't have to enter them in again. You're ready to go ahead and print. You can click the printer button or just push F12. You've now cashed your first check. Notice how here on the main screen, the preview box for Teddy Roosevelt has changed and now shows the check we just cashed, or the last check that he had cashed. From here, you can move on to advanced topics, such as advanced searches, reporting, and configuring with the administrator and the manager. 